for me, what I remember the most was the fear. People that know me now and have, are meeting me for the first time now really cannot believe what I was like in those days. I was very uptight, very self-conscious, uh, very reserved. I had to be delivered of a lot of fear, a fear of the unknown, fear of, of what people thought, because this was very a very different thing than what we had been doing before. We went to the Voice of the Apostles, and I can remember laying on the floor during an entire service when Heidi Baker spoke. Something happened. I can't tell you exactly what happened, but in that, that time out there in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, I came back a different person. That Sunday, I was, I was crazy. I was dancing all over the place, like, and Marge Wynn laughs at me and she says, you were like leaping like a gazelle. I just said, if anybody wants to receive what God's done in my life, I'll pray for you. And while Alan preached the sermon, I sat over on the side and I prayed. There was the longest line of people. I think I prayed for the entire service. I just prayed for people to receive. I met Alan Hawkins uh, at Del Norte Baptist Church and I had walked into the west doors looking for the Promise Keepers meeting. He stood up, and he's a big old fella, and I was like, oh my gosh, I can say this guy. I'd always been a musician. Uh, in fact, as soon as I met Jesus, I started playing in churches. When they wanted to start the service at the conference center, a Sunday morning contemporary service, they asked if I'd go ahead and lead that up and take care of that. The, the phrase, we're going out, had been mentioned a new church would be starting. What it would look like uh, was undetermined at that point. That had always been a dream of mine, to be part of a work that could help shape a city, help shape people's lives. And I really felt Alan was the person to do it. We went out to lunch, and uh, in the car he had just asked point blank, uh, you want to start a church with me? As time passed, the building changed hands, and the Episcopal Church, now the Anglican Church, Trinity at the Marketplace, bought out the building. Well, it was an odd thing. We were meeting in their auditorium. They were meeting in their fellowship hall, and they were wanting to remodel the building. They never asked us to leave, but we really felt the right thing for us to do was to get out of the building, allow them to remodel. And so just over my shoulder, you see the roof of the Sheraton. We went over to the Sheraton, and for a year, we became a very mobile church. That was a neat time just as the church grew and and uh, really, I, I think it took a whole lot of work to get everything going in there, but it was a fun time. You know, in the beginning, it was a lot of kind of grunt, grunt work. We were all like moving things and going places and with the kids. And it, so it drew us together, I think. It drew everyone together, just the, the work part of it. And, and it, was ex it was an exciting time. And I think worship has always been the key point for both groups and it brought us together. Our music and worship is, is such a vital part of New Life City life. Hearing Gary's music for the first time in the hotel in the giant room and dropping the kids off in little sub rooms where they're unpacking toys. There was a vibrance in it and it was a vibrance of an expectation that the Kingdom of God uh, would present itself uh, in our lives in every circumstance every day. I remember Camilo Garcia coming on and it was like a confirmation to the whole team that God wanted us to do music together. I've known Gary since I was about 13 or 14 years old. He would come and talk to my middle school after school on Fridays. One night, Alan and Gary and the, his leadership team from New Life Christian Fellowship showed up. And I saw Gary Archbeck. I was like, wow, you know, how crazy. I walked up and introduced myself, told him I was playing guitar, and, and he said, why don't you come sit, sit in with us on, a, on some practices, on worship team practices. I said, yeah, I'd like to do that. And it was amazing to me, the people that came forward that I didn't know very well, who really were very helpful at setting up Yeah, people's gifts people became a part that this. they hadn't had an opportunity to, to show their gifts. In a lot of ways, I think it was one of the healthiest periods we've had as a church, just because everybody it was at the front of their mind that that's what we had to do, you know, we had to take care of each other and uh, everybody really did it. I think we all loved doing the work because we were so excited about the future. Gary Archibald, the worship team, and the, and the volunteers that he set up to transition every week, they carried the weight of that thing. 
but it was a tremendous transition and it gave us wings to fly. It gave us the feeling, hey, we can do this. We can do anything we have to do as long as the Lord is with us.